Hi everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Uh, it's time for another interview, this time with musicology lecturer Flore Schuiling. We will talk about his book, The Instant Composer's Pool and Improvisation Beyond Jazz, but also his other research interests. So first of all, um, could you tell me what your position is at Utrecht University, Floris? Yes, um, well, thank you for having me, uh, first of all. Um, uh, I'm an assistant professor of uh, modern and contemporary music, and uh, I've, been, I've been working in Utrecht uh, for a while, and uh, since February uh, this year, I've been appointed as an uh, assistant professor. Uh, and uh, for the last couple of years, I've been mostly teaching in the uh, two MA programs that we have. This year, I've also been teaching uh, modern and contemporary music history uh, and a course on music uh, play and performance in the bachelor's program. What is your research field exactly? Um, <laughs> I did my PhD uh, at the University of Cambridge in a uh, center for musical performance as a creative practice. Um, so uh, my research has been uh, kind of in the field of uh, performance studies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very interested in um, musical performance as a as a, a form of social interaction and how how sort of creativity emerges from social interaction. I use a lot of work from from cultural anthropology and and sociology to describe these uh, social processes that uh, that are part of musical performance. Especially recently, I've been very interested in um, uh, how technology fits into that. So what is the role of technology in uh, the creative processes of, uh, of musical performance? What is your um, music background? Why did you choose musicology? I'm, I've always been interested in, in music. I've been playing uh, music for a long time. I play the piano. Um, I play a couple of other instruments not so well. Uh, I can sing uh, a little bit. Um, uh, but I've always been very interested in, in thinking about music and reading about music and talking about music. So uh, musicology uh, attracted me very much. Yeah, musicology is, I mean, it's traditionally it's been kind of centered around classical music, but I think in, in the field as it is now, uh, certainly uh, increasingly you can, I mean, you can study almost anything about music uh, that you want, you can go of deep into medieval music, you can study music of cultures around the world, you can study popular music, you can study jazz, experimentalism, um, yeah. music in media, music in film, music in video games. Uh, this, this almost anything is, is, is possible in the field right now. Uh, yeah. But you chose to focus on jazz in your publication. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the book, The Instant Composer's Pool and Improvisation Beyond Jazz. What was your motivation for writing this book? First of all, it was the music. Um, so the Instant Composers Pool uh, is a, is a um, world's famous group of, of improvisers uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's just really fascinating music. It's a little bit, I, I suppose if, if you, when you hear it the first time it sounds a little bit strange, a little bit difficult and it's, I guess it's the kind of music that a musicologist would like, um, but it's not, at least I don't think it's pretentious. Uh, there's a good deal of, of absurdity and humor in it, um, so it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, but most of all, it's just um, it's just incredibly good music made by uh, some very very gifted musicians. Um, so that's that was the first motivation uh, for for studying uh, this group. They were founded in 1967, um, uh, and they're still performing. So they're long lived. Um, and uh, they've been uh, the most important group, group for uh, freely improvised music in the Netherlands, uh, and they've performed uh, all over the world. What kind of attracted me about them as a, as a kind of research object uh, is that they improvise, but um, uh, Misha Mengelberg, who was uh, one of the founders uh, of the group, he was also trained as a composer, and yeah. he wrote a extensive repertoire of music for the group to perform. What's so fascinating about them, kind of from a, from a research point of view, is that the, the way that these compositions are written, but also the way that the group works, um, is that they don't um, diminish any of the improvisation, if you know what I mean. So normally yeah. you would say you either improvise or you play something from notation. Um, and 
in with this group they um you know they when they're improvising they're they're composing in the moment i mean that's kind of what instant composition means um but they can also when they play something from notation that creates new ways of improvising together so that was a very fascinating thing to me like how is this how is this possible how did this happen yeah um, the book is partly kind of a, a description of um, their creative process, a description of this this repertoire that they play, uh, their performance practices, uh, questions of musical creativity, and so it's based on a lot of field work. Uh, there's also a large part of the book is also historical. It's kind of a history of um, this encounter between uh, jazz, improvisation, experimental music, contemporary art music, uh, yeah. performance art uh, and so on. So it's also kind of trying to describe what is the historical background of this kind of fusion of composition and improvisation. I also read that uh, it's partly about political activism. Uh, yeah, how do political activism and jazz relate? How can it perce be perceived as a cultural practice? So the, the group was uh, actually when it was founded, it was not so much founded as a band, uh, but but partly as a political organization, uh, partly as a, as, a, as a music label. So, so free jazz and free improvisation have always had this kind of political edge to them. So especially in the USA, um, free jazz was also about freedom from systemic racism and it was sort of an expression of um, uh, revolutionary politics. Um, and uh, in Europe, uh, it was it was also associated with the revolutionary politics of the 1960s and 1970s. Playing music isn't uh, uh, a form of political action. You shouldn't necessarily confuse the two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also don't think that uh, you know there's nothing that, there's nothing inherently activist or political about improvising. Uh, but what it does do uh, is really uh, shift the focus to musical practice rather than music as a kind of finished product. Uh, and I do think that there's a kind of an important political concept or that's, yeah. that's, a, that's politically important to, to make that kind of conceptual shift. Yeah. Um, so for the, in the case of the ICP, uh, they, they've done a lot of political work, they and, and a lot of other people at that time uh, to kind of say, no, there's, with, there's, uh, there's other forms of making art. And that's of course a, uh, a very important political. Yeah. Uh, 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 process as well. Yeah, you also worked on the project Not Notation Cultures in Contemporary Music. Um, could you tell me a bit more about this? Why do you like to focus on notation? So as I, as I said, the, the question of notation was very kind of central to my study of the ICP. So I thought if improvisation and notation can be so kind of entwined rather than opposed, then you know, surely a lot of what we think about notation and what we think about improvisation and performance must be wrong. Um, so you could say that I kind of start from the from the premise that um, improvisation is kind of the basis of making music. Then, if we accept that, then kind of the question becomes: Then why do we notate music? What does that do for us? And you could say that sort of traditionally there's been two answers to this question. One is that, you know, notating music destroys something of the authenticity or something like that. And I don't think that that's true. I think that's a wrong answer. The mm -hmm. other answer has been uh, this idea that only when you write music down, does it become art. Uh, so that answer is, you know, it's even worse. Um, so I'm kind of trying to build up a concept of notation uh, from the ground up. Uh, looking at it as a, as a form of mediation. Uh, so using a lot of uh, concepts from um, technology studies, media studies. Um, and so the, 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 this concept of notation cultures that I've come up with tries to kind of um, approach notation as something that's inherent to musical practice and to musical culture. I've done um, uh, research on uh, different uses of notation, different kinds of notation. I've done more research on uh, improvisers using forms of notation. Um, then I've done some work uh, with uh, people who you, who um, perform music from the from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, mm -hmm. uh, and they use um, historical manuscripts rather than modern editions. 
Uh, so I've been studying how they do that kind of historical research and how they uh, use these uh, these manuscripts. Uh, and most recently, I've been doing a lot of work on uh, music for blind and visually impaired uh, musicians. So that's um, very briefly the project that I've been doing and the, and the, the next book that I'll be uh, writing. Um, and I was wondering, um, yeah, what are you mo looking most forward to uh, this upcoming academic year? I'm, I'm doing a lot of writing, so I hope to be able to kind of do a lot of it in the next uh, academic year, maybe even finish it by the next summer. Um, and another thing that I should actually mention that I'm quite mm -hmm. proud of, we just, uh, uh, with the music department in Utrecht and with the uh, Utrecht Conservatory and with the Amsterdam Conservatory and the music department in Amsterdam, uh, we got a quite a big uh, grant to uh, set up a new uh, bachelor's degree and a new master's degree uh, for students who want to do both a conservatory uh, program, so learning to make music, and a musicology program, learning to kind of think about music and write about music and read about music. That's great. Uh, so we just uh, got this grant, and so over the next couple of years, we're going to develop these programs. Um, so that's something I'm very, very excited about. Thank you, Floris, for the interview. It was very nice talking to you. Yeah, no problem. And I wish you a great summer and yeah, good luck with all the projects during the next year. Yeah, thank you. You have a great summer too.